Hello you 12, welcome back uh, to another flipped video. Today we are looking at um, a, another uh, rather large dot point. It is 9.2.3.S5. Uh, Use available evidence to explain the relationship between the conservation of water and the production and excretion of concentrated nitrogenous wastes in a range of Australian insects and terrestrial mammals. Looking at our dot point, we have uh, a relatively simple verb in explain, but we've got to use uh, available evidence. So, this is um, part of that evidence is actually just going to be a little bit of logic and reasoning in this one. So, um, it should be relatively straightforward. Well, what we're looking for is a relationship between the conservation of water and the production and excretion of concentrated nitrogenous wastes and the context for this is uh, Australian insects and terrestrial mammals. So let's have a look at our, uh, our nitrogenous wastes. Um, there are three main nitrogenous wastes. They are ammonia, urea and uric acid and they have different toxicity concentrations and excretion energy requirements. So if we have a look at this, um, we are looking for uh, generally um, nitrogenous wastes that have a low excretion energy and will generally have a high concentration. That is going to be the two features that are going to want to stand out for us today with uh, our insects and our mammals. So we'll have a look at those. So we've got to ask a few questions and this starts our kind of building of our uh, body of evidence here. So what do we know about insects? Well let's have a think. They're small. Most have wings that will allow them to fly. And because they're small, they can't actually carry a lot of water. Or they have they have weird shaped bodies and they, there's no actual like reservoir of water in them. So uh, they're pretty small. And all of this means that uh, insects basically have to be able to remove nitrogenous waste while only losing a small amount of water. Uh, they just can't afford to lose that water. Uh, because they've only got a little bit of it in their small, tiny little bodies. So this means that they produce uric acid. So uric acid can be secreted as a semi-solid paste. Now, uh, this is pretty cool. Um, we are now going to look at how they are able to do uh, uh, to secrete this uric acid. Now, I always get stuck with this one, but it's uh, they have a particular adaptation. They have the Malpighian tubes. All right, so it's the kind of the insect kidney, and what this does is that they produce uh, their urine, which has uric acid in it. Uh, water is extracted from that solution. And if you think of it as if uric acid is a solute in a solution, um, it crystallizes really uh, well at lower uh, water concentrations. So uh, what that means is that basically that insects are able to excrete crystalline uric acid. It's a, it's a semi-solid paste. Let's have a look at mammals. So let's uh, ask a couple of questions. What do we already know about them? Well, they generally live in uh, desert or semi-arid environments. These are Australian ones, by the way. Australian mammals, they live in a desert or semi-arid environments. They have adaptations for temperature control. Where they uh, may not encounter water frequently. And we know that mammals produce urea. So, what does this mean for us? Well, it means that mammals need to have adaptations that contribute to water conservation whilst efficiently removing their nitrogenous waste. Let's have a look at uh, two um, particular... Uh, mammals that we've got here. We've got the red kangaroo and we've got the spinifex hopping mouse. Cute little, cute little critter. Alright, so we have adaptations in uh, mammals, desert mammals, um, that uh, allow them to conserve water whilst excreting urea. So basically, um, the first one is a long loop of Henle. And what this means, um, when we study the kidney a little bit more, it become a little bit more clearer, but they basically have uh, the ability to reabsorb water that was expended um, creating urine in the first place. What this essentially means is that less, wa less water is lost with waste with humans producing urine with uh, 
1200 osmolarity and Australian Desert Mammals produce a urine with 5500 osmolarity so there's a significantly larger amount of solutes in the solution here with desert mammals. They generally don't have sweat glands, they, they generally uh, are able to regulate their body temperature through different means and different types of adaptations that don't require the secretion of a fluid outside of the body. Uh, and they also don't pant, that's a kind of um, an interesting one, you know dogs dogs panting cool down really easily with their uh, with their tongue and the saliva and the sloppy bleh, right? Dogs ex uh, waste a lot of water uh, cooling their bodies down. A lot of Australian mammals don't do this. Cool thing about the speed effects hopping mice, um, they actually don't need to drink. They, they, they can drink, if there's water available they will drink, but they don't need to. And The reason why they don't need to is that they are actually able to harness the six molecules of uh, water that are produced when they break down a single glucose molecule. So uh, if this is a, a balanced, balanced equation here. So one molecule of glucose requires six oxygen molecules, which is in plenty supply in the atmosphere, produces six carbon dioxide molecules, and then this six water molecules, and this will and obviously energy and all the other good stuff. Um, but uh, this part here, the animal is actually able to keep and make useful in their body, which um, is not something that uh, humans do very well at all. So let's have a look. Uh, with our summary. So, remember, we're trying to construct an answer that talks about a relationship between the concentration of waste uh, and uh, water conservation. So, uh, insects can't carry water and they may not encounter it. Mammals may not encounter it, encounter it but do require it for the production of urine. So, uh, because uh, urea is dissolved in vo large volumes of water. So, uh, what we have here is types of nitrogen waste, we've got uric acid and then urea, and then adaptations that facilitate it. Well, we have the Malpagian tubes, uh, which allow the excretion of a semi-solid paste, and then we have extended loop of Henle, excreting highly uh, excrete highly concentrated urine. So. Hopefully, we can see the relationship here with, uh, we have highly concentrated, so if this is coming out of the semi-solid paste, that's extremely concentrated. If you have extremely uh, concentrated urine, as opposed to other mammals, you can see that uh, concentration of uh, nitrogenous wastes and water conservation adaptations almost go hand in hand. Alright, hopefully we, uh, that one was relatively straightforward to understand, boys and girls, and uh, we'll see you in the classroom.